Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And uh, we have Tim Alexander here for a special update on what's going on in Ukraine. We have the similar things going on with Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela. And, of course, in Syria, all kinds of regime changes occurred by the international bankers through the proxy of the, of the golem of America and the Western war machines. Uh, and, of course, the intelligence operations to try to bring down these regimes is going to result in some very nasty things. Uh, to analyze those and to give us his uh, report, we have Tim Alexander. Tim, what's the latest on what's going on in these different hotspots? Well, we've had you know confirmation that Russian ships with uh, Russian troops have uh, docked in the uh, Russian bases in the southern Ukraine, uh, in the Crimean. Uh, there are Russian naval infantry armored personnel carriers uh, on this main square, uh, it's the largest city in the Crimean. Um, all, uh, there's a long Russian-Ukrainian border, and there are reports of uh, troop movements, uh, massing of troops, and so forth, uh, kind of in multiple places along that long border, particularly by uh, s- several of the large uh, Ukrainian cities. Now, Russia is positioning itself for a strike uh, into the Ukraine. I don't think that strike will be limited to the Crimea. It may take place first there because they're already there physically. Um, but I think that because of the uh, Russian and Belarusian uh, natural gas pipelines to Europe being located in the western Ukraine, I don't think they're going to sit still for uh, uh, dividing the Ukraine into two parts. I think they're they're going to want uh, to recontrol all of it. Uh, what transpired uh, was absolutely outrageous, and only because the mainstream media is nothing but a, a propaganda uh, rags uh, for the globalists and Zionists anymore. Uh, it, people aren't really concerned about it. And a lot of people don't, uh, who, who don't listen to alternative news really aren't aware of the problems in Ukraine and how dangerous the situation is. I maintain that the, potentially this is much more dangerous than the Cuban Missile Crisis because this is a matter of vital national interest to Russia and also to Russia's allies. This is China, Belarus, uh, Iran, and so forth. Uh, it's one thing to do the color revolutions when various countries have uh, just broken apart from the, the Soviet Union, but this is many years later. It's another thing to do uh, the Arab Spring in Libya and, and uh, Tunisia and Egypt and a, a variety of places. But when you're messing with the Ukraine, this was part of Russia for about half a millennium. Um, and this is their breadbasket. This, this, and an area uh, in uh, North Dakota, uh, Western uh, Canada, is one of the two greatest grain-producing areas on the planet, and probably it's number one. Um, Russia cannot stand for uh, this to fall to the West, but there's there's more here at stake. We're partly witnessing history. And let me explain, if I can, for our listeners uh, what I mean by that. Uh, When the Russian Revolution took place, uh, the Ukrainian farmers were were relatively wealthy. Uh, And I'm not talking about nobility or anything like that. I'm talking about just average, uh, hardworking uh, Ukrainian farmers because their their soil was so uh, productive. And many of them had managed, uh, after the end of uh, uh, serfdom, to, to acquire their own farms. Well, of course, the communists didn't want that. The communists wanted to own, control everything, and to nationalize their farms. And they were meeting a stiff resistance from the Ukrainian farmers, so Stalin decided to starve them into submission. And at one point, it, it, you know, even FDR clearly supported it, because FDR even sent several million in go bullion to, to the early uh, Soviets. Uh, millions of people starved in the Ukraine, and they starved uh, in the most productive food-growing region on the planet because the Red Army and the Cheka, the secret police, went in and stowed everything that could be eaten. Uh, those families that, uh, for instance, were able to hide a pig or hide some grain or something, uh, when the if they were found out, 
one of the things they frequently did was drag the the man out, the father, the the, the head of the family out, gut and uh, carve him apart in front of the house, in front of his wife and children. Uh, this was one of the yeah, most there, brutal things think, in history. I think it was an estimated between eight and eleven million uh, Ukrainians died that way. Right. Right. It was a lot. So, in other words, when they talk about the Holocaust, this is probably double even the high estimate of the Holocaust in yeah. terms of the number of Ukrainians and, who died. And nobody was punished for no. this. Now, and, now, by the way, the, Nazis... and by the way, the people in control right now, the so-called rabble, the ultra-right wing, these are the Nazis. They're not neo-Nazis. Yeah, I, I, I was getting even that. The, the, even, even the Germans, even the Germans and Austrians hated them because the Ukrainian heads of these Polish death camps were more vicious than the Germans and, and, and the Austrians ever thought of. Yeah, exactly. Well, when the, the Nazis came in, they were welcomed in the Ukraine with open arms. It wasn't that they were necessarily anti-Russian, they were anti-communist. And remember, they were also Orthodox Christians, as, as most of the Russians were, and their priests and nuns were, were systematically destroyed uh, in, in, the, in, in the gulags by the, by the communists. But anyway, the, the, the Nazis got, uh, I think, two or three divisions out of that. But the Nazis were such pigs that uh, many of the Ukrainians turned against them. Anyway, there was this uh, uh, remnant of these people that had fought for the Nazis, and uh, with the independents, many of them have come back into the far right. And they use Nazi salutes, and they're vehemently anti-Jewish, anti-Russian, anti-this, anti-that. Uh, these are many of the people that have been going around with masks on, they're thugs. And they basically took over uh, this, this color revolution, this uh, Arab Spring type thing that uh, the American taxpayers spent $5 billion with a B of our, our money over the last few months creating out of thin air uh, in the Ukraine. And many of the demonstrators were being paid. Now, $5 billion, Ukraine's a pretty big country, but you have to realize that probably the average Ukrainian family lives on 200 bucks a month. So $5 billion goes a heck of a long way. Uh, but the Russians simply can't uh, allow, uh, in effect, uh, fascist Nazis to, to to control the Ukraine and and to be a dagger uh, literally at the heart of Russia because actually the Ukraine was part of Russia uh, they they can't tolerate it it's it's a matter of vital national interest it's a matter of survival for Russia so. The uh, Obama administration, doing the bidding of, of the global uh, banking cartel and the Zionists, has created a situation where Russia has to act. And the real question is not so much if Ru there's a Russian military intervention and, and, and where it is, but what happens after that. Uh, and, the, you know, are the globalists and their bought and paid for political horrors in the West so demonically influenced that they'll actually take matters to the Third World War? Or perhaps maybe not quite that far, but something really horrific, war in Europe. And, um, and that that's the big question. And, uh, you know, there are many commentators uh, out there that are, are saying this is a, and myself included, that there is a probability, not necessarily a 50% probability, but there is a significant probability that we're heading in that direction. And it's very dangerous. It's totally insane. And by insane, I mean clinically insane. Uh, no rational uh, human being wants the Third World War. Uh, that, that's not it's not not only is it not logical it, it is insanity no rational human being wants to step in front of a speeding mac truck you know right exactly amazing yeah well uh, we uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk more when we come back yeah it's it's pretty bad oh yeah history being made as we speak
welcome back. And uh, this, today's the start of video blogs. I put up about a 44-minute video blog reviewing some of the news and all a lot of the Nutrimeds and other technologies. Uh, Tim, uh, let's look at the overall pattern here. There's too yeah, many I things happening at once. I need to start some stuff for you, Dr. Bill. I, I, yeah. My studio is not done. It's been a mess, but uh, I guess yeah. I'm just going to have to go with what I got. But uh, yeah, The other thing yeah. we can do is I can dial in and we can just carry on a, video, uh, uh, a discussion. If you even give me a series of links to the particular articles you want or on your web blog, I can post your web blog up as video and we'll just yeah, talk I, about I, it on the I, I, Yeah, yeah, we need to focus in on... on, on yeah, I, I'll tell you why I'm putting more time in the news because a lot of people are really skeptical. You know, the, the, here, here's what the problem is. It's very difficult for people to believe because, number one, and I mentioned this on Rents just before Valentine's Day, people are empty spiritually. They don't really have hope and they don't have faith. And the reason why is they don't have, they have a love of the Most High God. They haven't exchanged their love of their fellow man, whether or not... See, if, love should be unconditional. It shouldn't be dependent on whether somebody does something nice for you. It should be something where God, for example, loved the world so much, even in our sin, he actually would come and die, and, and his blood shed, so he'd bring it back into relationship. Well, That's when, exactly we have that right. kind of, when we have that kind of relationship, also not only with the future, where we don't know people 200 or 1,000 years from now, what we need to do is we need to have that kind of love to actually bring a world back from the brink of disaster. Jesus said, when I return, you shall be as I am. So what he's saying is, you need to start, you know, if, if he was Fred Astaire, you need to tap dance like Fred Astaire. You need to learn how to dance. And the problem is that people have to have that love first before they're going to get faith and before they're going to get hope. You don't, you know, screw up your eyes and then, you know, starve yourself and go in a fast and think that without a relationship with God, you're going to get that faith and hope. You're not. You're going to get false hope false faith and that's what's being built out you know we have distractions people out there and the, watching you know all everything from television to videos to drug addictions to sex addictions to everything and all these are tied back to the fact that people are lost and they in the, their first reflex when they see something really bad like the news we're talking about which is international wars and rumors of wars economic chaos and other things all happening and orchestrated by a dark conductor of evil satan and people find that too unbelievable well, the fact is People know that Satan exists. In fact, they did a poll some years ago and found out 93% of the population believes in Satan and the devil, and 87% believe in God. 6% are in a, 6 are in a I, lot of trouble. I, I, that always strikes me as kind of weird that more people believe in Satan than they do in, in, in God. But the reality is you, you can see good and you can see evil. You can right. see good in, in the love of a, a mother or father for their child, uh, for the child, for the parent, for a husband and wife, uh, right. and in people simply helping. I, I don't, I've cooked before at, at uh, soup kitchens, and, and I'll tell you, you get more out of it than you put in it. Uh, you feel really good when you help people, and, and just people you may not know, but I mean, it, it, it's a very positive experience. And on the other side, hate, fear, those are extremely negative vibrational uh, uh, frequencies. And when you go down that road, uh, it becomes a, it, it eats on you, and it wants to grab hold of you and not let go of you. And God is, is, is peace and love, but we have so much evil. And I, I, quite frankly, I don't even watch television anymore. I watch some stuff on Netflix, but uh, it, it, because I control you know, even more so what I'm watching on Netflix. But I just, I, have, I, I don't even use my televisions anymore. And the trash that is being fed to the public 24-7 is really shocking. And people that, that only get their news from ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, and Fox are at a loss because those, those uh, all that is is government propaganda or globalist propaganda. Uh, by the way, I'm going to read something here from Veterans Today, about uh, two or three paragraphs, uh, which is interesting. Ukraine is far more important to Russia than it is to the U.S. or EU. Right. If the situation in Ukraine spirals out of control and right-wing extremists seize control, Russian intervention is certain. The arrogant and stupid Obama regime has carelessly and recklessly created a direct strategic 
strategic threat to the existence of Russia. Right. According to the Moscow Times, this is what a senior Russian official has to say. If Ukraine breaks apart, it will trigger a war. Ukraine will lose Crimea first because well, Russia will go in just as we did in Georgia. Another Russian official said, we will not allow Europe and the U.S. to take Ukraine from us. The states of the former Soviet Union, we are one family. We, they think Russia is still as weak as it was in the early 1990s, but we are not. Uh, let me see one more paragraph. If the Ukrainian right wing is in a stronger position than Washington's pain, paid Ukrainian puppets, especially weak and irrelevant persons who sold out their country for Washington's money, the right sector is organized. It is armed. It is indigenous. It is de not dependent on money funneled from Washington and EU finance uh, non-governmental organizations. It has an ideology and its focus. The right sector doesn't have to pay its protesters to take the streets like Washington had to. Now, what they're talking about by this right sector is, is uh, in many cases, the physical descendants, but or at least the spiritual descendants of the extreme right-wing uh, uh, fascist the Nazi element from the Second World War. And they use Nazi-type salutes and Nazi-type uh, insignia. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Nazis were monsters, just as the communists were monsters. And we have created uh, just a nightmare now in the Ukraine. Well, we did the same thing by supporting al-Qaeda to attack Syria and do a regime change, and then we say we're going to attack al-Qaeda in Iraq, which is now in such a serious civil war every week. There's two or 300 people that die from bombings. Oh, yeah, all the time. All yeah, the every time. week now. It's an incredible mess. And now this announcement came out today, I was reading, that Obama intends to completely withdraw from Afghanistan now that he's made it a mess, and which will cause a further problem because warlords is in firm control. We've actually paid them not to shoot American troops, so they're still doing the drug trade. And all those illegal drugs are ending up in places like Moscow to destroy the young people there, and Putin's fully aware. Yeah, and, and you know, the one thing, and this is the only thing I give the Taliban credit for, because I think they're, 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 they're monsters, the way they treat women and everything else. But the one thing that they did that was positive is they put a stop to the opium trade. And when NATO came in, well, it just it, it grew even bigger than what it used to be. And heroin is one of these addictive substances that anybody pushing that crap should be taken out shot dead yeah because it just it, it makes slaves out of people it's it's you know crack meth all this stuff is is horrible uh but here's our government our troops in there guarding the opium fields and i've seen pictures of them i've seen pictures of our our troops in the opium fields standing next to bags of opium they don't mess with it they you know they, they this is big business the banksters are make the banksters are making a, a fortune off handling the money we have gone down some really horrible roads we have allowed the worst scum on earth to control the american government and I'm afraid we're going to pay a terrible, terrible price. Well, our first terrible price is the economic system is in chaos. That's why these wars are now going on everywhere. It's the final pathway uh, toward the mark of the beast is, is now set. Welcome back. And... Uh, Tim, one of the reasons why, and I, and I saw this when I was a, a physician, I mean, I'm not going to go through my whole testimony, but, you know, I went through near-death experiences and I met Jesus at eight and a half, but I wasn't, uh, if you want to call it, in either the Catholic Church or the churches afterward, really introduced to real Christians. It's like the uh, some of the statements made by, uh, you remember the Indian peacemaker, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mahatma Gandhi. But, you know, oh, Gandhi, oh, oh, Gandhi. Oh, and he India said, from Christi India. Christianity, he said, is the most wonderful religion on earth. Someday I'll meet one. Well, uh, if I had met a real Christian, and I'm a real Delta Force Christian. I'm not a mamby-pamby milk and cookies Christian. I don't take prisoners uh, spiritually and intellectually because I know that if I don't get through to them, they're not just going to die a physical death. They're going to the place of annihilation, the lake of fire, the place of where the worm of their destruction rises forever. Uh, so my attitude is, I'm rescuing you like a hamburger from the barbecue of this world that's falling into the fires of destruction. 
So uh, what I tell people is, and I get calls like this all the week. I, I mean, I do, sometimes when you hear people hear me cough, it's because I'm doing 8, 10, 12 hours of calling per day, plus research and writing. I'm writing a major article, which is almost completed now on Fukushima, and I'm preparing papers this year for our various academies. So my secret weapon is this. I say, well, you're having trouble with your wife, your husband, your boss, your friend, and they really don't want to get in their face. They don't want to be not nice. Now, I want people to understand this. I will die for you. I will tell the truth for you, even if I'm tortured to death. I will do anything for you with the love of the Most High God, but he will not take your crap. And so what I tell people is, you tell your friend, your husband, your wife, your boss, whoever, that if they won't listen to you and check out the references and material, ask them two questions. Number one, what's your phone numbers and what are convenient time windows for Dr. Deagle to call you? And we're going to have a discussion, and I find about less than one hundredth of one percent will actually do that. Most of the time when they tell the person, they immediately become compliant and willing to listen to them because they realize if they've heard anything about Deagle, they realize they'll never be the same afterward, even if it ticks them off. And that's what we need is we need real Christians that are going to get in people's face and say, I'm not going to play with the truth. I'm not going to let you just do it hominem attacks and go right from their toes and spittle on us intellectually and otherwise or use hominem attacks. I want them to know we present facts. For example, I did my video blog 44 minutes this morning. That video blog is based on articles they can see right on the video screen on live stream. I pay for the live screen myself. I put everything up at my cost. And so it's no cost to you to have a look at it and say, oh, my gosh. This is not Deagle's opinion. These are journalists from around the world that are well-papered, etc. We can get into the spiritual and the, uh, and the other things, but to be honest with you, God gives us and makes his watchman on the wall. If we look at the Bible, virtually every single sign that Jesus Christ said, the prophets, the apostles, Old and New Testaments, they're all fulfilled now. We're only dealing with the last few things, and things are going to go crazy. And if you read the Bible, you are absolutely convinced that our God is outside of the dimensions in time and space, and he is prescient, omniscient, omnipotent, and all-loving. There is no other source for love, power, peace, security. If anybody thinks they can create peace and security themselves, like Satan, and the first words heard in heaven, I'm sure, that really tick God off is, hey, God, and of course Satan thinks he's really good because he's the most intelligent created being, hey, God, I got this. <laughs> I'm sure those are the first words that, that Satan said. And God went, oh, what? <laughs> so, so what I tell people to do is, if you have a non-compliant person, you ask them those questions. And let me tell you, uh, you're not just dealing with Dr. Deagle and my intellect. You're dealing with words that already show up in my head when I pray before I talk to you from the Most High God. And I'm not going to deal pleasantly, which is why I never, and I have millions of audience every day now, we're all around the world ever get invited to a church even after they call me because I give them a pre-screen I, I tell them straight up these are the questions I'm going to ask you and your deacons board if I come to your church or even just video link and then they always pull back and go oh, well, I don't think that's a good idea I think I don't think it is either because you don't want to have Ezekiel or Jeremiah or Isaiah come to your church because you're not ready you're well, not ready. You, you know what's happened, and, and actually my uh, Orthodox priest gave a pretty good sermon on this uh, this last Sunday. Um, we have this concept that's developed in America, all dogs go to heaven. In other yeah, words, right. I've been baptized, so I'm saved. Well, yeah, that well, doesn't mean One saved always saved. That's another blasphemous thing. Paul himself said, though I return to you and say another gospel, do not believe it. Paul's saying, hey, I'm an apostle. Called by God, ran the road to Emmaus, to, to Damascus. And guess what? If I come back and teach you another gospel, don't believe it. In other words, I'm lost. So sure. if Paul will say that, don't you think that maybe we should have a little humility and realize if we decided to say, God, you know, I got this just like Satan did, you're in big trouble. We can't, you can't just say, oh, I've been baptized, and therefore I don't have to to be a good person, and <laughs> yeah, right. oh, if, if I cheat on my wife, well, God will forgive me, and all dogs go to heaven, see, and yeah, right. uh, <laughs> if, I, if I'm horrible to my kids, well, God will forgive me, and if I lie and steal, and steal, to steal well, God will forgive me, all dogs go to heaven, you know, and uh, I've been baptized, I'm a Christian. Okay. Well, I don't go to church, but that's all right, because it, it's, he's in my heart. It's not just uh, something superficial. If you're a Christian, you have to live it. And well, we're not yeah, perfect. Very... 
But you have to uh, try to live it. You have to make the effort, and especially now, because now we are headed towards this time that the Bible speaks of, the apocalypse, the Armageddon, the, the, the final battle. And we live in a time of absolutely incredible propaganda and read propaganda as lies, sophisticated, high-tech lies that are designed to lead us astray. But, you know, you, you can see in this world right now multiple areas that are headed towards the Third World War, be it China, Japan, be it uh, 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 you, uh, the Ukraine, be it uh, the Middle East, uh, uh, Venezuela, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can see multiple uh, population reduction programs, in, in other words, murder programs like the poisoning of our food, uh, our water supply, uh, Fukushima, the, and and you know the uh, British petroleum oil disaster, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're trying to eliminate most of us, and they want to enslave the rest of us. This is a demonic agenda, and no sane human being. And I didn't. And, I'll argue this with any psychiatrist or psychologist on this earth. No sane human being wants the Third World War. Yet we right. have people at a very high level that are manipulating they're, they're, and they're, pushing us to the Third World War. Well, if you listen to Reverse Speech, we have David John Oates on the program uh, regularly. And if you listen to Reverse Speech, what you're hearing is across the what I call the looking glass. Their soul can't tell a lie, but it's in reverse speech. Okay? <laughs> and... Uh, I'm just going to go through the Ten Commandments. I'll give you a little expansion. It says, I am the Lord thou God, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay. Now, what he's really saying is that you need to marry your soul. There's three parts of the human being. The spirit, which is eternal, it's God in you. So everybody that you offend has a portion of God in them. The person that you shoot or the person you abuse, your wife, your child, there's a little, there's a little seed of the sure. creator God in every single being. Okay. Not only in the physical beings, but also in the what plants. What you do animals. the least of every, my brethren, you do to me. Right. Even the plants, the, the whales, every living thing has a seed of the Creator God in them. We and are God's soul, living thought of creation. Right. And then the second thing is, what God's saying is, you need, this is the marriage supper. When it talks about the marriage supper of the Lamb, it's not a marriage between a man and a woman. It's a marriage between our soul and the eternal spirit of the Creator. That's why he said no one's given in marriage. What he's really saying is the marriage of your soul to the eternal one, the spirit of the Creator. That means that, Shema, you have to hear and do, not when you pray, but every breath, every heartbeat should be in alignment with your Creator. So he's saying, I am the Lord thy God, you shall have no other gods before me. What he's really saying is, when you marry me, you can't be a polygamist. And when you marry me, every thought, every intent of your heart, everything, that's why Jesus said, if you think with the intent of your heart to do something evil, you've done it. The second commandment, it says, uh, you shall not make for yourself an idol. What he's really saying is, don't make a, an idol of anything else and worship it in place of me. In other words, don't put sports teams or money or anything money else. Money or, yeah. You can, you can be rich, but you don't worship it. Uh, the third is, do not take the name of the Lord in vain. What he's saying is, don't curse me, who literally makes you exist. Don't curse me, who loves you and is the only source of... Back in a moment. I just want to complete the little summary of some of the Ten Commandments because a lot of people don't understand it. The very first commandment is basically, I'm going to repeat them again. I'm married to you. Don't be polygamist. I'm just going to summarize it. Number two, <laughs> don't worship anything other than me. That's what God's saying. Don't have a relationship with anybody else. Don't worship anything else. Don't become addicted to anything else, whether it's electronic drugs, video games, media, celebrity worship. Don't. Uh, number three, it says, don't curse me when things go bad. In other words, I'm there for you, and the way for you to receive faith and hope is to deposit love with me, and I will make it right. Okay? And number four, it's to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. It's not just the Sabbath or seventh day of the week, which is, by the way, Saturday, not Sunday, but it's the Sabbath rest that happens every day, which means you have to rest in God. In other words, you're not going to solve these problems in this world. I'm not. You're not, Tim. No one is. We have to put our trust in the Creator God, and He will give us ideas. He'll make us be able to follow Him into the solution. Even but if we... you gave you or me a magic wand, and we, we could wave right. it and, and change everything, we couldn't do it right. We don't have no. the knowledge. Only but, but God listen, does. The, 
But what, but what we're saying is when we submit to God and we say we're empty, God, fill us, God said, good, now that you know you're empty, I'll help you. Now that you come to me, I will intervene supernaturally, naturally, in every way to make it right. Uh, it says, honor your father and mother. What it's saying is you can honor them, but you don't have to agree with them if they're doing abusive or evil things. By honoring them, it means that you treat your elders, not just your father and mother, but the elders, the people that have accumulated spiritual and physical knowledge, our society, in the Western society especially, not like Eastern, like Korean or Japanese or Asian, they honor their parents and grandparents and so on. So in other words, if you don't honor the wisdom of your elders, that's what it's meaning, you're going to have a society that's going to fly apart. And because since about the 1960s, our entire society and the media have crushed the honor of the wisdom of the elderly. The elderly yeah, are treated like... Yeah, just the opposite. It's everything yeah, the elderly are treated like crap. For example, you know... When people see me, they think, well, I'm in my 40s, but I'm 62. And the elderly people that look their age, you know, 60s or 70s or 80s, they get treated by crap by their relatives. Elder abuse is, is rampant. And if you're older and you're knowledgeable, like you know about the Second World War, the First World War, about what really happened to America in the 50s and 60s and how it went downhill, they don't want to hear it. They might like the music of the 60s and 70s, but they don't want to hear the truth. We don't live in that same kind of world because we've been programmed by media and by the devil is ultimately what's going on number six number, number six we it says it says do not kill or murder now it doesn't say kill it says do not murder if you're defending yourself and someone dies that's not murder then that, that's not that, that's not uh, murdering murdering is an intent for your heart to dominate the other party by purposely going after them and killing them but if you are defending yourself and someone dies that is not a sin and people need to know the difference because the actual commandment says murder. Murder is you're the aggressor, you're the one that starts it, you're the one that creates the situation. If you're being attacked, Jesus has, has already said, if you don't defend yourself, you're worse than a, uh, than a... So when people often put this out and say, well, you shouldn't have a weapon, if you're a real Christian, you shouldn't defend yourself, they're idiots. I'm a Delta Christian, I'm a Delta Force a Christian, a Joshua Christian. You come planning on committing harm to me and my family, you wish the devil himself was after you because I'll kill you quicker and spit. And you have to understand, I'm a trauma surgeon. I know how to, I'm not afraid of my blood or anybody else's, and I'm willing to die for the truth. That's what real Christians are. We do not have intent against harm against anybody, including even those people who invade our country. We want to convert them to know the Yeshua HaMashiach. We do not want them to physically attack us, and that includes our own government. They need to know we mean business. They need to know we're not passive doormats, including the crazy Muslims, that if they think they're going to attack us here or in any other country, they're going to live long. No, we're going to go send them to see their 72 virgins and find out Allah is actually a demon in the, in the bowels of hell, and there's no virgins, and they've been sewn over. Hmm? That's like the okay. joke that uh, Bin Laden goes uh, to, to meet uh, St. Peter, and uh, he says, where's right. my 72 virgins? And George Washington walks up and knocks him in tomorrow, and he staggers up, and then uh, Jefferson hits him and, and several, and he says, well, where's my 72 virgins? And they say, no, that's Virginians. Ah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> the next commandment, seven, says, you shall not commit adultery. Adultery means... The only sacred uh, institution that Jesus and God created was the family. And we have the devastation of the family. For example, Obama's uh, move on, on gay and lesbian. And do you know that Google now has over 40 different designations of sexually alternatives to male and female? No, oh, forty. pathetic. 40. It's obscene. And, and the fact is these are all designed so eventually human beings could reproduce. They have new news out now. And I, I believe that some of these genetic things like replacing damaged mitochondria is good or damaged genes. But when you get into the idea that, you're, for example, the rabbis, this is over a decade ago in Israel, met and actually made to a conclusion in Israel, because it's the most secular, agnostic, demonic nation on earth is Israel, believe it or not. I believe uh, and I was, And I was, uh, I was, you know, Acosta, I originally thought back in the early 90s when I went there, oh, it's a wonderful place, it's so Jewishly right and Christian. Boy, did I ever get a shock. Uh, the rabbis agreed that you can create a clone of yourself and will all of your possessions to your clone. And now, of course, with Greg Kurzweil, their intention is to download their consciousness into their clone. So their clone literally is a version of them, even though it's just a memory tracer. And the echo of who they were. eternity is God, not man. Exactly. So People playing God doesn't work. Right. So when, when God's saying, thou shalt not commit adultery, he's also basically saying, I'm against false 
uh, d- d- designations of so-called marriage that are not marriage, that create a, procreate a human beings through normal, quote, wild reproduction. I'm against laboratory reproduction of human beings, is what he's saying. I'm against uh, adultery sexually, and also by the intent of the heart. People, Jesus said, if you think you're doing adultery in your mind, you're doing it. In other words, sexual perversion. All these things that take away from a normal relationship, it's almost like someone getting addicted to something that is toxic, uh, and so that normal sex becomes boring. Okay, so yeah, not pornography good. is is really quite dangerous. Very and dangerous. you know, uh, when I first started college in 1968, I remember going to fraternity rush parties, and the first thing they did was get the barf box out. The second thing they do would do would be to hook up the beer tap, and these 17, 18 year old kids, many of whom never had a, a drop of beer in their life, would chug it down and then throw up shortly thereafter. Right, and the third exactly. thing they do would, would be to get the uh, the porn movies out, which were really terrible. But nowadays, with the internet, you see all these, and often very beautiful young gals, and just doing things that they shouldn't be doing, uh, well, period, it, and certainly it, not on film. But it even gets worse than just a bit perverted sex. It gets into what's called snuff moves. And these snuff movies are made in third world countries like Central and South America and around the world. And they kill someone, children especially. So it gets read into the heart of sex magic rituals and demonic possession demonic. and obsession. That is pure demonic. Yeah, but, but people need to realize this is not a, a peripheral thing. And, uh, you know, they have to understand that but, these demonic things occur in every town and city in the Western world. I mean, in. And, and when you treat a person purely as a collection of desirable body parts, not as a human being with a right. mother, a father, uh, et cetera, et cetera, you are, you're, you're sitting against God, you're sitting against that person, you're sitting against yourself. Right. You now, the next, the next commandment is thou shalt not steal. Now, when you have quantitative easing, you're expanding the money supply, so you're stealing from the population. Inflation is theft. Usury is theft. Charging interest is theft. Uh, these are the forms of theft. Uh, when you have government that taxes in, inappropriately, uh, taxes should only be for foreign defense and for infrastructure and nothing more. The idea that government intervenes with giant taxes, uh, what we need to have is we need to have a system where people can get credit for charity. And to be honest with you, we give tons of charity and we'd like to direct it where we want to. We don't want our money taken from us and given to Obamacare so they can pay for abortions or population control. And now since Obama's in, it was not just seven times more likely if you're black to be aborted in your mother's womb. It's worse. Uh, so do not steal. So the government's stealing from us. The corporations, transnational corporations, they steal by moving business to overseas locations to avoid regulations and pollution and everything else and then ship back inferior goods with, and take our jobs from us. This if is you're our age, theft. you've seen what America used right, to so be, we need, we need, and now need, you see how poor we are we, because we, we, these, they're stealing as well. Well, we, we need to stop theft from the government and transnational corporations and theft by uh, usury and theft by interest, etc. Uh, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. That's also false witness in the media. False witness through the courts. The court procedures are designed to make sure they bear false witness on you. And uh, we have a, an entire system of deception that's based on false witness. You should not cover your neighbor's wife and your neighbor's goods. What it means, you should not try to steal them from them or plan how you're going to get them. Just the intent of your heart, in other words, is evil. That's why people need to realize they didn't need 33,000 laws like we have. They just needed 10 commandments. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Yep. That's right. Get right with God. These are really uh, scary times. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to see uh, attempts to change the uh, regime at Maduro's regime in Venezuela. Mideast war heating up. And the uh, issue in Kiev is the worst of all. That's really hot. 